Hey, so what is going on everybody? I'm back with another YouTube video. Now in today's video, guys, we are going to be doing a basically another game review of another uh, Wraith gameplay that I did uh, about a week ago, actually, now. Uh, and basically in this game, I am playing with no add-ons uh, and four perks, uh, and I did pretty well. Uh, now, for some uh, kill streak or win streaks, this would not be considered a win. But I would say that this was pretty much a draw. The survivors did really good. I did pretty good. Uh, but we both, on both sides, we made a lot of blunders that ultimately determined the outcome of the map, in my opinion. Or the, the match, sorry, the, in, in my opinion. <clears throat> but before we start talking about this video, of course, I have a few announcements to make. Um... I apologize for not getting the video out yesterday. I looked at one of the requests for the ghost to bunk, and I didn't think it was going to work because I was probably going to get a copyright claim for it. So if you do want a ghost to bunk, please give me a request. But now I'm going to push it aside because we've been waiting for like two weeks now for the ghost to bunk. It's not come out. Uh, so this video is from the poll vote. Uh, and my next video tomorrow, hopefully... Um, I'm going to just do a video that I kind of want to do, so we'll all experiment and see what I can, uh, do tomorrow. I will also be streaming tonight and tomorrow night, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Of course, it's the weekend, I want to have some fun with you guys and stuff like that. And I think that is all the announcements that I really need to make. Make sure you're checking on my community posts and make sure you join the Discord server. I'll put a link in the description of every video from now on, because I know the links expire after a while, as I discovered uh, but other than that, let's uh, start talking about this game. As you can see, I spawned in on Gas Heaven. Not a very good map for Wraith, unless you have Windstorm and stuff like that. It's not really going to go well for you. You need high mobility on this map. So if you're playing as Nurse, it's going to... I mean, you're really going to... Uh, you're going to do a lot better, certainly, than a Wraith would, because you can pass by those objects and stuff like that. Uh, but it, it was a tough match, um, and uh, yeah, let's just uh, talk about what happened. First of all, the build, uh, going right into it before I even go. <clears throat> this is a bit of a different build than I did last time. Last time it was kind of more of a gen slowdown build all around. This time it has a combination of uh, some uh, slowdown perks and some tracking perks, I guess you could say. So obviously the Ruin Undying combo, <clears throat> it's basically going to be nerfed here pretty soon. But I think it'll still work, I, at least I think. I haven't really checked on what the new Undying will be like. Uh, the new update will be coming out Wednesday, by the way. Uh, so I'll definitely make a stream around that. I'm very excited. Uh, but the Ruin Undying combo, just a very, very great combo all around. And Sloppy Butcher and Nurse is Calling, not a bad combo either, because if they're going to be healing for longer, uh, then it gives you more of an opportunity to sneak up on those survivors and get a down, which is always something good. You always want to be sneaking up on survivors and getting free hits, and that's his strength, and that's why nurses work so well on him, uh, as well as sloppy, because you on you're only going to be going for M1 hits. Obviously, there's no special attack that Wraith has. Um, and Ruin Undying works on really any killer, but if you're a killer that can scare people on, off of gens pretty quickly, uh, you're gonna benefit from Ruin Undying pretty well. Uh, so that's really all there is to say about the build. As you can see, I'm running no add-ons here on the bottom, and let's just get right into it. So I am looking around the map. I'm thinking they're spawning at the corner to the right. There's a generator over there, uh, but I eventually discover... I, I hear a generator going off, and I start to chase with a Cheryl. I, this is the second time recording this uh, gameplay review, by the way, because I was going to do it yesterday, and I messed up a few times, so that, my apologies for that. <clears throat> so I go in. Can I just say something? Getting into the Gas Heaven building with like the rework and stuff like that is just a living hell, and you'll see that throughout the gameplay. Like I, I'm trying to find a survivor later in the gameplay and I'm forced to break the breakable wall. It's it's just super annoying. Um, <clears throat> that's a big example there. Uh, so here I fake like I'm going to go that way and get the hit here. I was very, very happy to get that. Uh, and I thought initially, initially that she was going to keep looping it and I was like, yes, yeah, she's going to be trapped. She's going to stay in the loop. But she played the smart way, and she got out of there as quick as she can. So I follow her here. I do something dumb. I cloak here, which I'm... Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. 
I try to mind game this loop, it's not gonna work. She is not an early power dropper. Until she does that. <laughs> And she leaves the loop. That was actually a smart play by here, uh, by her. As you can see, I finally cloak here. And that was a dumb mistake by me. If I had Windstorm, this wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, but even then, if I had Windstorm, she's going up to a loop up here. And um, she's just going to have the advantage there. And it doesn't matter what I do. I could try to uncloak and uh, get it down. But that's not going to work. As you can see, I catch up a little bit faster, like 50, plus 10% movement speed. And as you can see, I uncloak here, and it's just, it's not going to work. It's unmind gameable. The sloop is pretty strong if you know how to play it, as you can see, this Cheryl. Okay, so you guys did not see this trick in my last gameplay review. This is actually something new I learned, uh, specifically from a YouTuber named True Talent. Now, this can work on really any killer if you play good enough. It's just better on Wraith in some ways because if you flick, it's going to make it look even more deceiving because they're going to think, oh, you're swinging. It's going to give him even more of a stun. <coughs> um, <clears throat> so it's a lot more deceiving than on other killers, but it can really li realistically work on any killer. This is not the perfect loop to do on it. If it's a loop where there is a long side and then a short side, uh, in between the palette, like those loops on like Mac Millen specifically is what I'm talking about. This works very well. Here, it still works either way because I'm making them drop the palette and then just giving up chase, which like even if I didn't get the down, it's still better than looping her for so, so and so and then not getting anything out of it. So I believe I leave chase eventually. I pretend to break the palette and I get freaking stuck here. I bet I could have catch, caught up to her, but I eventually just give up chase here. I thought she was going to drop the pallet there. She doesn't. She, uh, wasn't greedy there. Uh, as you can see, I did this in my last gameplay. Um, if you just flick when they're close to you, it'll bait a dead hard. It'll bait a pallet drop, as you know now. And it will bait a or, uh, oh my god, a juke. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this happen in the gameplay. Let's see what I do here. I flick here as well. It works on this Meg, but even better because she greed vaulted, and I don't know why she did this. It was a very, very stupid play by the by the Meg. She greed vaulted so early. She could have waited until I at least gotten around the car there before she vaulted. So uh, I don't even think I had to flick. She probably still would have dropped it thinking that she would have stunned me, and I could have easily mind-gamed her and got the hit. But as you can see, I still get the hit here. She vaults. Uh, let's see what I do next. I don't remember. Oh, yes, I cloak again. This is so stupid. And then I kick the pallet. I guess it's not that bad, but I don't really get much out of that. I eventually... I could have waited a little bit longer to unclick there. And this is where I make a huge blunder. As you can see, I was flicking way too far around the teammate. And that's something that you should... Uh, this is something that you should definitely know. <clears throat> if you're going to flick at someone... Try my, not to make it so far away to the point where no matter what you do, you're going to try to lunge and you're going to completely miss. Uh, you want to get right up next to them so you don't even have to lunge. So it's easier to get that hit right up next to them. Um, and then flick. I got really greedy here. Uh, and, of course, she knew how to juke pretty well. And, yeah. And I completely... And because of this blunder, she gets a huge, huge uh, head start in chase here. And you'll see that. See, I miss. <clears throat> I miss again. Or, no, I get a little bit confused about my tracking. Very stupid play. I'm still getting trying to get better and better at tracking. Tracking is something that I think has to do with how well you really are with tracking. And also how consistent you are with tracking. I'm really good with tracking. Don't get me wrong. But am I consistent? Not all the time. Because I was a little bit flustered here. And a little bit confused. And I try to mind game this loop, uh, and it, it's if, if a survivor knows what he's doing, uh, the killer shack loop is just unmind gameable. As you can see, all she has to do is just wait for what I'm going to do. She went around the building actually. I pretend to leave, and this is a good strategy to do on a wraith. Um, when you're in chase and you're in a bad position with the survivor, or you think that they're gonna get to a um, 
a good loop. And I didn't do this as much as I did in my Dead Dog Saloon uh, gameplay last time. I did a lot more in there. Um, <clears throat> on this, this is probably the only time where I did something like this, where I pretend to leave Chase and come back at a good angle and get the down. I think the survivor had Spine Shield, though. As you can see, her aura is over there. She's healing. So I'm like, oh, here's a better opportunity to get the down. I don't think anybody's... Well, there's probably a few people working on generators, but I don't think it'll hold me back too much. And I still have not gotten a hook, so I've had a rough early game in this match. I am desperate need of getting him uh, down. And the worst thing I can do here, honestly, is just to give up Chase on this Meg when I can get her at a different angle and get the down. And that's something that you have to think about when you're doing these gameplays sometimes. Is that don't always think that you have to give up Chase because you're having a rough early game or a rough mid game or whatever. Because uh, I understand endgame, right? Because you're trying to keep the generators in control. But at, to some extent, you're going to need to commit to a chase. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. The survivors are eventually going to pressure those gen gens enough to get them all done. And you'll see that later in this gameplay. But I just want to remind you that. So I come back. <clears throat> I think she had spine chill or she was just paying attention. Either or. Now, if you're playing, paying attention to the sound cues, she, for some reason, went into the locker. Uh, last I checked, there was no inner strength in the, in the, um, post-game. And even if she had inner strength, she was running a flashlight, so she was using self-care, so it wouldn't make any sense. This was just a stupid play. She could have easily used that, uh, a dozen more times, and I, there's nothing I can do, but... I put her in the basement to try to get some extra pressure in the early game. Plus, I'm not in a really good position. I haven't really gotten any downs lately. But luckily, they haven't really finished in any gens yet. A generator is, I'm almost guaranteeing you, about to pop. Yep, generator pops. <clears throat> so I'm not too mad. A generator for a down, but not a very good position. I could have done better in the early game. I believe another generator pops, and this is where I get a bit flustered. As you can see, I'm heading back for the basement because I figure um, it's gonna be it's gonna take them a little bit to get out of the basement, and by the time I catch up, that'll mean that I'll get to pressure two survivors at once, and I know that only another two survivors, at least one of them, has to be working on a generator, right? But the other one just finished a generator. So there could only be a possibility of one other person working on a generator. So even though a person finishes the a generator a few seconds later, you'll see, because I remember, um, <clears throat> this is just something to know about when you're doing your game. It's just remembering what survivors did a little bit of a go to, to give you these little uh, increments of information. And it'll help you. It'll help you a lot. And I don't think I was really thinking about this at the moment if i'm going to be very honest but this is something to think about when you're doing this gameplay and i wanted to acknowledge that even though when i was doing this gameplay i probably was not thinking about <laughs> what the other survivors were doing i just wanted to head to that basement and apply some pressure yep see that generator pops I kind of greed here. I go for the Meg, and once again, I get a little bit flustered. I could have easily gone around the rock. I was, I think I thought they were going to probably greed and go around, but I, once again, I get a little bit flustered and greedy here and make a blunder. As you can see, I uncloak. They go this way, and I believe I miss here. Yeah, and I just... Now, initially, I thought the Fang wasn't going to get a lot of distance. She slowed down and spun around, but then she plays this pallet well, and it's not going well for me. She doesn't greed vault. I thought she was going to. I cloak. Well, I pretended to cloak, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm going to cloak. Uh, I do the flip here. Oh, nope. Uh, I just remembered I did this. Uh, I should have definitely flicked here. I don't know what the heck I was doing. I was getting a little bit greedy and frustrated. Uh, so, another blunder by me. And sometimes that just has to do with, um, uh, just, like, how cool you are about the game. And I was, I was, I was kind of a little bit tempered here. So, I got a little bit greedy there. Luckily, what did the thing do? I break this pallet. I get that out of the way. Because I realize that it's pretty a strong pallet. 
Oh yeah, so I leave the thing, and I believe I find the mag over here. I break this pallet. Now, I just want to mention something. You see that generator to the right? Later on in this gameplay, I am going to have a devastating time trying to maintain this generator. And, uh, the, this is where, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was the biggest moment uh, of the gameplay because this so had to do so much with what the survivors were doing and what I was doing. And that ultimately decided the outcome of this gameplay. I think had the survivors pressured the generators a little bit more, specifically this one, they could have easily gotten at least two survivors out. I think I could have gotten a 2K had, you know, some they done a little bit better. But, uh, so I would say that some of the things that happened at the end of the game had to do with how the survivors played. Uh, so it kind of evened out, really. It, it had to do with what I did and what the survivors did uh, that um, determined the outcome. So I hear the uh, Meg doing the chest here. That was very, very stupid. She did I did miss, but I still get the down. Once again, I greeted there. I could have flipped easily, but I thought it was going to be an easy hit. Obviously not. Um, and that's... As you can see there, I um, I just looked at the rock. If you're playing Dead by Daylight um, and you think that someone has a flashlight or you just want to play it safe, always just stare at a wall. Like, just for the safety, uh, just do it because you never know when someone's going to come around the corner and do a flashlight, especially in swift groups. I don't think this was a swift group, though. At least two of them to get, were together, but I don't think uh, any more than that. So that's just something to do all the time. So here's my... What, second hook? Yeah, I'm not doing very well. I don't get a hook till a long time. A lot more time in this gameplay. Here, as you can see, I saw the survivor healing. And, um, I, like, I didn't know that there was a... God, the stupid icon. I didn't know that there was a second uh, survivor over here. So I was like, oh, I can just easily get to this survivor. And... <laughs> I think I accidentally chased the healthy survivor, which is kind of stupid. Yeah, she heals, and then... And then, yeah, I... Was that the same thing? I think so. Okay. So, when I was chasing this thing, and, uh... And I hit her, at this moment, I was thinking, I'm not doing very well. They got two generators popped. There's a survivor on the hook. Someone's going to come around the corner and get the save. For whatever reason, the survivor kills themselves on hook. You know, survivors, they'll get mad over anything. So this was another reason why I think they lost. I think had they not done that, once again, I probably would have gotten 2k, maybe even a 1k, if they would have pressured those generators a little more. So I got very lucky this match, I must say. I think there's going to be some better gameplays in the future than this one. But this was kind of like a... Like a... A, a pain reliever for me in this match, her killing herself. Although I didn't really want it to happen. I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. I was like, oh, dang it, I'm running no add-ons this match. The last thing I want is people to kill themselves or DC and stuff like that. So now it's just a 3v1 for the rest of the game. But even if it is a 3v1, they do a pretty good job at pressuring these generators. Not a great job, but a pretty good job at g pressuring these generators for a 3v1, I must say. So I cloak here, get close to her, try to get the down. Do I get the down here? So, yeah, it didn't take long for me to get the down, did it? I click here, as you can see, bait the juice, get the down. I think it was after this down, uh, it takes me a while to get another one. Because I'm not committing to a lot of chases, and you'll see that. You'll see that here. I almost forgot, they popped another generator in the distance. So... Yes. After this down, um, they are pressuring this one generator in the middle that I showed you earlier. And, um, there were so many times where I could have freaking got the Cheryl that was pressuring the generator, and I just didn't commit to it. And I think had I done that, that might have, uh, stopped, um, uh, stopped these, uh, generators from getting completed. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, I... I think I was, once again, a little bit flustered and scared that the 
all the generators were going to get popped really quick and uh, it was going to end the game off just where we left off. Just with one survivor sacrificed and three survivors left. So I hook her. Uh, let's see what I do next. Can't guarantee. I checked this gen. Not being worked on yet. But you'll see here a little bit later. This gen is not being worked on. I'm pretty much just patrolling the generators right now. Still not getting the unhook. And I do a stupid move here. I was getting greedy for a body block. I was like, oh, I'm going to get the b block and there's nothing she can do. And I sit in the middle of the freaking pallet and get this, like, five-second stun. That was very stupid. Nothing much, nothing much more to say about that one. <laughs> Here, I actually bait the pallet drop, but she played it smart and just ran away from the loop. And I kind of sat there thinking she would stay and keep looping it. And she gets some distance. Oh, well, not a lot. I thought she was going to go to the killer shack. That, she definitely could have gone to the killer shack there. I miss. I'm getting a little bit greedy. I don't know why I ain't flicking here. Once again, I'm just a little bit mad. I finally start flicking. And I get the hit. I've already said multiple times why I kind of did that. Pretend to cloak there. By the way, the reason why uh, I pretend to cloak sometimes in the gameplay is really just to kind of, like, uh, raise the survivor's awareness a few times. Now, this is a lot better if you're using the Bone Clapper add-on because it's map-wide. But it still alerts survivors who are pretty close. So just in case, I'm always occasionally, not all the time, just ringing my bell because I would just be a meme. Uh, but occasionally I'll ding my bell just to kind of maybe spook a survivor that's cl close. I flick there and I get the down. Man, I thought it was going to be a long time to get it down. I know there was a time in this game where... It took me a, a while to get another down. I guess I just hook her and do something else. Yep, I see that she unhooks. And another generator pops in the distance, and this is where we get to kind of the... I would say that that last section that you just saw was pretty much the first part of the gameplay. Now we're getting into the mid-game. I know, four generators popped, right? But I think, really, this as a whole was pretty much the first part of the gameplay. This whole next part of the gameplay, I am completely trying to control these generators. Of course, I go after these survivors, but after that, I'm completely trying to keep in control of these generators, and that's where things get really good. Man, I just... If they if they would have kept those... Because they did kind of gen rush a little bit here. They were really focused on generators. If they just kept it up a little bit more, they could have easily won the game. Yeah, I figured she wouldn't vault, so I down her. I slug her. Go to the Hex Totem. I make a stupid play here. I think that she's still on the Hex Totem. She left. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get an easy grab here. And she left. <laughs> so that was kind of stupid. But I think I get like one hit on here, her and then I just leave. Right? I think so. Yeah, she goes that way. And I'm, yeah. Once again, that had to do with my tracking was off there. I thought she, I could have sworn that she was going to vault that window. But she actually played it pretty well and just kept went going. That is something good to do uh, with killers, by the way. And this happened... I think this is the second time it happened to me, this match. If a killer is mind-gaming you really, really hard, uh, the, the best thing to do is either run away from the loop because they're just going to continue mind-gaming that pallet or drop the pallet early. And most killers 
will just probably leave the pallet alone and try to keep going after you. But even then, both situations, right? You're going to get so much distance, and they're already going to waste so much time by them mind gaming themselves and then having to catch back up to you. It's it's almost like you got a sprint burst mid chase. So that's something to note. So I go back to her uncloak and pick her up. I did notice uh, at this stage of the game that I also had a TTV in my lobby. So I actually tried to find her and say GG because I thought she played very well. Unfortunately, she was not streaming at the time, which kind of sucks. So definitely wanted to say GG while she was streaming so she knew who I was. So this is the stage of the game, like I was saying, where this Cheryl, or uh, whatever her name is, because she's a, a legacy character, I know that, uh, but uh, where this Cheryl, and it's only the Cheryl, I think there was only a few times where another survivor got on it, was pressuring this generator really hard, so I'm trying to control these generators, uh, and I'm not really committing to a lot of chases, so I'm not really going to be getting downs very frequently and stuff like that. So, fine. I did that, right? It stopped the generators for quite a lot of time. I mean, look at the extra duration. Six more minutes of the, the game. And probably at least four more minutes the generators stay up. That's, that's a long time in Dead by Daylight terms. Sure, it'll keep the generators up for a little bit, right? But in these situations where you're down to one gen and you have a, a, a decent three gen or three gen, the worst thing you can do is spend... 15 minutes just trying to patrol the generators, uh, keep them where they're at, and you're just going to waste so much time where you could be ending the game a lot more efficiently because ultimately the survivors are going to eventually pop that gen if you're if you're not committing to them uh, because they're going to say, well, why do I need to heal? He's obviously not going to commit to me if I run away. He's going to try to keep control of those generators when he le when he leaves to go find another generator, I'm just gonna come back. So it's in it's I know it sounds like it's not important. I didn't hardcore try to keep these generators for so long, right? But I did not commit to so many chases to the point where I was like, oh, screw if that last gen gets done. I don't care. I'm I'm getting a down, whatever, right? Because they got the generators done pretty quick, but. You should still be trying to commit to chases at least a little bit. But if a survivor's taking you across the map, then that's not something you want to do. So I chased this Cheryl around the little junk pile. And as I said earlier, uh, trying to get around this stupid thing is just a living hell. And as you can see, I'm like, oh, what do I do? How do I get around... I could have vaulted the window. I don't know what the frick I'm doing. Now that I realize that. That is the first time I realize that. I give up that chase. That was so stupid. <coughs> I go check on this gen not being worked on. Of course, that Cheryl went right back to that generator over there. Oh, I do see an aura. So that Cheryl probably went right back. I think I probably get a hit here and just leave. Yeah, I just leave. I don't even commit to the chase. I'm like, that Lori's definitely working on that generator. So, like I said earlier, if they're leading you across the map, and you know for a fact that there are at least two or three other survivors who could be getting gens done, it, you shouldn't be spending, like, more than two minutes with them. But, of course, this is at the end game. I don't need... I can't be spending any time um, trying to chase her. Well, I should say mid-game. It's, it's still the mid-game, because I'm pressuring these generators, but... Yeah. So I go back. This Lori, she... See, this is something she could have done better. And I realize that there's Ruin, so there's no need to really stay at that generator. Ruin definitely helped this match, let me just say that. Uh, I think, if, out of everything, Sloppy Butcher and Nurses, they helped a little bit. A few times in the match. But Ruin and Dying, had I not had that, I don't think I could have won this match. But she left the gen so early, which I kind of understand now. There's Ruin. It's not really worth it to stay on it for so long. So, uh, yeah, I bait that power drop, get the hit here, because I know that she's in a pretty good position. Once again, I get a little flustered here, and I miss that attack. 
I cloak here, go back to the gen. Once again, that Lori's right back on there. Or, not the freaking Lori, the Cheryl's right back on there. I try to cut her off here, knowing that she's going to go that way. And once again, how did I miss that? It could have been an easy down. Goes to the killer shack, I cloak here. Just a waste of time. <coughs> and she teabags at the pallet. And she... Uh, the reason why I left here is because I figured uh, the other survivors don't really be uh, don't really uh, seem to be wanting to pressure that generator. So I figure, why not down this Cheryl, stop her from going back on there. So I kind of just commit to this one. Oh no, I don't. I need to stop assuming things. Oh yes, I go after this healing survivor. Uh, I did a little bit of a, uh, a little trick on her. Instead of letting her run away and get distance, I pretend like I didn't see her healing, and then come back and get the hit. I see her behind the tires. Get the hit here. Block for a moment. Right? And then I run right back to that generator. I figure she's probably going to waste her time healing with sloppy and nurses. I need to pressure this gen. Get the Cheryl. Yep, she goes right back onto it. Get the Cheryl off of there. And had I not came back, these two survivors would have worked on that gen, and it would have gotten done within the next 20 seconds, likely. I mean, I don't know how much progress was on there, but at least the next 20 to 30 seconds. I get the hit here, and I go right back, I believe. Yep, I flick. Well, since she's going towards the generator, I just kind of follow her, because I'm right next to the generator, and I'm not going to try to repair it. what I do here. Do I slug and just... No, I hook her, because I know that that Cheryl's not going to get that gen done in enough time, even if I'm sitting here trying to hook her. I hook her back here. I could have hooked her in the basement, but I, I just kind of wanted to get the get her on the hook real quick and fast and get back over there. I pretend to cloak here, but I... Oh, no, I didn't. I think I accidentally cloaked, if I'm going to be honest. I don't think I wanted to cloak because I was so close to the generator where it wasn't even worth it, to be honest. But she vaults the window. What does she do next? She tries to loop here. Vaults it. Oh, Cheryl, you better leave. I think she eventually finds a way to get out. Yeah, I keep faking this... This, uh, breaking the pallet. That's something you can do as killer, but I don't recommend you do it so many times to the point where it becomes obvious. This is a cute little mind game, but on some survivors who are paying attention, they're gonna know that the animation that you're trying to mimic is not what's actually happening. I, I think I finally decided to break it, yeah, because I would have been sitting here forever. And there is only two survivors left, so I'm in a pretty good spot, but since the other uh, thing was not working on that generator, I think she pops the one in the far corner. And I wasn't really paying attention to that one. I probably should have known, knowing that that Cheryl was uh, off of that generator, for sure. Well, <laughs> she just came back. She is really greedy. That's It just shows you how greedy these survivors come. And this is where I am super, super frustrated. I really wanted to get a 4K this match, if I'm going to be very honest. And I see that generator pop in the distance. I was like, God dang it, why didn't I check that generator sooner? I could have easily gone around. That Cheryl probably wouldn't have finished that gen. I probably could have lured off, gone around, and tried to stop the generator from going, getting done. And this Lori has adrenaline, and she ends up escaping for that reason. So I uh, try to get the hit on this Lori. Um, and I didn't see anybody working on the exit gate, but once I start hearing it, I'm like, oh my god, how is that generator or that exit gate already that progressed? See, like, I just don't understand. Get the down just before she can escape there. 
tried to pressure. I think that uh, she had a flashlight. I probably could have hit her and then done something, but she just escapes, and that ends the game right there. So that was a really, really good game. Yeah, she just goes. She knows she's not going to get the unhook safely. She probably could have and got us both out, but she just booked it out of there. What a game, though, honestly. I clear out my pallets. I saw the hatch earlier in the game, but I didn't bother to close it. What a good game, though. I only get brutal. Like, that's kind of stupid. I think I should have gotten ruthless. But, uh, I guess it had to do with my early game, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, they need to get rid of this bug, seriously. I want to see my, my weapon. Yeah, as you can see, I just got enough to get, get a safety pip. And here's their perks. Uh, two decisives, an unbreakable, two self-cares, no, three self-cares. Um, yeah, just some overall pretty good meta perks. Uh, the ranks weren't really that good. Uh, we had two red ranks, but the purple rank and the green rank kind of just shows why they didn't play very, very well. So, I think there are going to be some better, uh, games that we can use in the future, but... Uh, this one I wanted to use since I was using no add-ons. If I do happen to record a game in the future with no add-ons, and it's pretty good, uh, even if I make mistakes, um, then I, I think I'll still consider reviewing that. But I wanted to get that uh, game out of the way. I recorded it, so I figured I might as well review this and talk to you guys about uh, what I think. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. Remember, I'm going to be streaming tonight and tomorrow and hopefully be getting a new video released tomorrow. So stay tuned. It will be my own video, so it will be kind of a surprise and stuff like that. And the link in the description to the Discord server will be down in the description. Uh, make sure you uh, look at it before it expires, because I know that those links expire. Otherwise, like and subscribe, guys. And I'll see you next time.